Melbourne. Cumulus Media. Call the law firm of Anajar and Levine at 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. It's time to talk sports. Now from the fan studios in Melbourne, it's the Mark Moses Show on Sports Radio 1560 The Fan. You can be a part of the conversation at 321-984-1234. Now here's your host, Mark Moses. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome indeed to a Tuesday edition of the Mark Moses Show only right here on Sports Radio 1560. The Fan. That's how we roll, man. Yes, it is a Tuesday. And I want to start with this from the bottom of my heart. Congratulations and good luck to a good friend of mine and a big friend of this show. And he was the first guest I ever had. August 19th, 2013, here on the Mark Moses Show here in Central Florida. Steve Englehart, former head football coach at Florida Tech with the Panthers, who don't play football anymore. He was there from the beginning, got here, what, like 2011, until they had their final game in 2019. He has been out of football for a couple years. Today, it was announced on their official website, Steve Englehart, former coach of Florida Tech, will be the new head football coach at Presbyterian. That's right. My good friend, TJ McMahon, who comes on the show from time to time, he is an alumni of Presbyterian. That's his school, the Blue Hose. Good luck to Coach Englehart. I'm very excited for him. I really am. And I put this on Twitter, but if you didn't see it, I'm going to say it live on the air. Good luck to Coach Englehart. He's a great guy, great family man, great football coach. He'll do really well there. He will. He will. I'm not expecting to go 11-0 in the first season, but he will build that program up. I know he's been waiting for this opportunity. He got this opportunity. Good luck to coach. And you know what? I sent him a text right before the show, and I said, hey, good luck, coach. We're going to be rooting for you. And he wrote back, thank you. We should try to get coach on. You know, especially maybe sometime in the spring or maybe, you know, leading up to kick off this fall. We got to get him on. I know it's going to be very tough for him. He's got to, you know, pack the family. He's got to drive up there. He's got to get the team. He's probably got to work on recruiting, uh, a coaching staff. He's going to be a busy man. So I'm not going to bother him right now. But I think that's a cool story. And it makes me think. Hey, can we get football back at Florida Tech? Can we do that? I I liked going to the games. I like talking about them on the air. We're winning football games at Florida Tech. We were doing well. It wasn't like, you look at from the first season 2013 to 2019, it's not like they were going 2-9 and every year and they were a disaster and an embarrassment. No! They were winning the conference. They were going to the playoffs. I mean, Coach Inglehart was, what, a two-time coach of the year in the conference? And the overall record for him at Florida Tech, I think it was something like 44-35. and 35. They were playing good football. They really were. And they pulled the plug on the program. They did. All right. That's what happened at Florida Tech. That was their decision. I got to respect the decision. I just, I wish they still had football there. I really did. But yeah, again, to start the show, and I got to start with a positive. Good luck to Coach Inglehart. That's right. Make everyone proud here in Brevard County. And all the Florida Tech alumni, especially the former football players. That's what this is about. And honestly, I never thought he'd last this long in in Melbourne anyway. I thought especially after the second playoff appearance, I thought he'd go. He'd go to a better, bigger and better job. And it didn't work out that way. You had covid They shut down the program. I know he's doing some real estate there for a moment, but he's a football coach. And now he's going to get his opportunity. So good luck to Coach Inglehart. Can't stress that enough. Now, you know, yesterday was like about, you know, it was a great big Monday show coming off a a kind of two-week hiatus because of the holidays. So it was like, I'd say, I don't know, 70% Antonio Brown Buccaneers 
And then the other 30% was on college football yesterday. And I really didn't get the opportunity to break down what I I wanted to start the show with yesterday, but I, I couldn't. It was just so crazy with Antonio Brown, I couldn't do it. So I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. That that passing of John Madden like really hit me hard. I didn't think it would, and when it did, it really hit me. And I know it happened, what was it, you know, a couple days ago, and just I know everyone's been talking about it, but I didn't really get a chance to chime in with my two cents. So I want to do that real quick. And we got much to discuss today. We really do. I really like John Madden. John Madden was part of my childhood. It really was. I think of my parents where, you know, they're watching that Beatles documentary on Apple Plus, and they grew up with the Beatles, and that's their favorite band. And it's cool with my parents where, you know, they're both baby boomers, where my dad, he got to see the Beatles in high school at Comiskey Park. And my mother went with her two sisters and saw the Beatles at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. So they both have that. Where they're very lucky they saw the actual Beatles. I know people, they say, oh, I saw Paul McCartney. I saw Ringo Starr. I saw George Harrison. Like, I get it. My parents were so fortunate and lucky when they were young. They had the opportunity to see the Beatles in concert when they were originally a band. They're very fortunate. And it's funny when they talk about the Beatles, it's it's very close to their heart. It means a lot to them. And when I think of John Madden, I know this is, it's a weird comparison. John Madden was part of my childhood. And I know if you're listening right now and you're a football fan, John Madden was part of your childhood as well. And I really like the Fox documentary. If you missed it, don't worry. Fox Sports 1, FS1, they play it every single night. They don't have a lot of programming. It's that or like old episodes of SmackDown from three weeks ago or maybe some baseball game from last summer. They don't have a lot of programming. So yes, FS1 is going to play it again if you missed it. I highly recommend you watch the John Mannon documentary. It was really good. And ESPN.com, they had a great a great kind of summary of John Madden with different news and notes and stories. And it's just interesting. He reminds me of, like he's Santa Claus. That's what John Madden is to people, where he's, just, he's the big lovable guy. And when he comes and he shows up, everyone's happy. Yay! It's John Madden. That Yay! It's Santa Claus. That's what he reminds me of. And my childhood was, and the NFL is my favorite sport. Growing up, I remember the game of the day was John Madden and Pat Summerall. That was the game. Uh, especially on Fox. Those two are calling the late game, 4.15 Eastern on a Sunday. It was John Madden, and it was Pat Summerall. That's what I remember as my childhood. And Madden was, you know, he really emphasized the everyday man, where when he was on the call, he would teach you about the game. He'd present it to you in a way that you could understand. And when I talk to people on the street, if I see you somewhere, and, and they're like, Mark, what's going on here? I try to do that John Madden approach where I try to explain it to people where everyone can understand. And that's what I learned from John Madden. And just the passion and having fun, it came across with him on the air. It did. And I really think about that. And, you know, he, he was on, you know, he was on Fox and then he went to, what is it, Sunday Night Football with Al Michaels. That was like kind of the first season there on NBC. It was like the 06 season. He's the only broadcaster where. He was on all four major networks, CBS, ABC, NBC, and Fox. And I thought the documentary did a great job where it showed you how big of a deal it was in 93 when CBS lost the rights to play the NFC. And they went to Fox and Rupert Murdoch, the owner of the News Corp Corporation, He's like, I got to get John Madden. It's the first call he made. If I get Madden, I get Summerall, then we're legit. And he signed for what was like $30 million. And this is the early 90s for a broadcaster. This was a big deal at the time. And it really did legitimize it. And look, I grew up with Fox. I love The Simpsons, Married with Children. I'd watch Martin. You know, but they didn't have any sports on, really. When they got the NFL, I always remember that, where 
you know, they, they had the games on, and it was Summerall and Madden, and then, you know, the, you created this pregame show, and I grew up on this. I'm an NFC guy. I grew up with James Brown, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and then, you know, when Jimmy Johnson was done with his coaching career, especially after the Dolphins, he joined them as well. That was my childhood. And I remember going to the NFC Championship game. It was my Bears against the Saints. And our seats right in front of us was the Fox pregame show. This is a big deal in 2006, seeing those guys in person. And it all started because of John Madden. And then, you know what I'm going to say. And I know my sister makes fun of me where she calls me Rain Man. I grew up on John Madden football, video games. John Madden football. On top of, you know, it was Tecmo Bowl originally. And we've had these discussions on the air. Tecmo Bowl on Nintendo was the first football video game I ever played on a TV. I remember you had the, like, Tiger Electronic football game. I played that. But, you know, Tecmo Bowl on Nintendo was the first video game I played on a TV. Then I remember, I always remember this, went to a friend's house and we played... You know, after you're playing Tecmo Bowl, I remember my buddy, we were at his house, and he's like, look, I got the Sega Genesis. And I was like, I've never played that before. And he had Joe Montana Sports Talk Football. And I remember being a little kid, and this is like late 80s, early 90s. And I'm like, what is going on here? And it was the most just basic, seriously, basic audio. Or it'd be like, Montana, back to pass. He looks right, throws it to Rice, touchdown San Francisco. And when you're a little kid, you're like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. The TV is talking like a real game. We get Joe Montana, sports talk football. I remember when I, and this is a true story, all right? I'm not going to lie to you. So when I was a kid, I had horrible teeth. Hell, I still have horrible teeth now. And uh, the dentist said, Mark, you have to get braces. And, and I'm like a kid and I was so upset and my dad felt bad. So he took me to Best Buy. This is like early nineties. And he got me Joe Montana sports talk football, 1994. And that's when Montana signed with the Kansas city chiefs. And I loved that game. Loved it. Love it to this day. Love that game. But then something happened. Okay. Something really happened. I was at a buddy's house. We are playing Genesis. And I'm like, what's this game? And I remember this. I go, what's this game? He's like, oh, this is John Madden football. And I think the first one I played was 93. And I'm like, this is uh, unbelievable. This is better than Tecmo Bowl. This is better than Joe Montana Sports Talk Football. This is awesome. And I didn't get the first one. And I remember... I know, I know. I have photographic memory. I don't bring it up very often, but I do. So my sister took me to Target. And this was like one of the first years we ever got Target in the early 90s. I remember seeing Target in that Jennifer Connelly movie, Career Opportunities. And yes, as the kids would say, she was a smoke show in that movie. And to this day, she is still a smoke show. I remember buying... John Madden 94. And the and the case, I remember, it was so basic and boring. It was a big box from EA Sports. And, you know, Electronic Arts is out of Orlando. And, and it just had him on it. And just him holding a football. He's not a player. You know, usually you look at, at video games, it's like, you know, oh, here's a, you know, we, my cousin had like a David Robinson basketball. And you'd have Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run. You'd have all these, you know, these different players. I remember you had like Tony La Russa baseball on Genesis, but John Madden football. Remember you had NBA Live, MLB uh, baseball, you know, triple play baseball. You had all these different games, but this was John Madden football, right? And I played it and played it. My brother played with me and our friends would come over and we'd play. And then all of a sudden, and this is my life. When I think of the history of what I've done and accomplished, there's some good things and some dumb things and some bad things. One of them, and I don't know where it would fall in this category. I would buy John Madden football every single year. Every year. 
94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. It just go on and on. And then you transition from Genesis to PlayStation and then PlayStation 2 and then PlayStation 3. And I'd have it on Xbox, Xbox 360. And I just buy it over and over and over. And there's other great NFL video games. But then it just became a monopoly after a while where it's all about Madden, 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 Madden. And I bet little kids now, they don't even know who Madden is, but they know that's the video game. And there was something, and I was reading this article where it talked about, so when they first approached him for the game in the late 80s, they said, look, all we could do for, because it was originally on a computer, we could do eight on eight, and that'll be the game. And Madden said, no, no. If it's going to be a real football game, it has to be 11 on 11. So it took EA about two years to get it working, and then they did. And Madden cut some deal where I think it was something like, okay, I want $100,000 first year, and I want 5% of the profits. <laughs> and it says in the article, this is ESPN.com, where I think it was, there was an NBA game. Might It might have been the Dr. J versus Larry Bird game where each of them got maybe, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Remember, these are NBA All-Stars. Madden is just a broadcaster at this point. He got $100,000, and they gave it to him because he le- legitimized the game. And I'm telling you, every single year, I'd buy the game. And I could tell you who the cover athlete is after a while. I could do it still to this day. And I still get angry. The only time my my Bears have ever been on the cover, I think it's like Madden maybe 2000 on PlayStation one where Barry Sanders is on the cover with John Madden. And in the background, Barry Sanders is kind of stiff arming a bears defender. So yes, we have made the cover we have. And it angers me that multiple Detroit lions have been on the cover, Barry Sanders a couple times. And I think Megatron's on it as well. I have that game on Xbox 360, but every year and it was cool in Orlando a couple years ago when we had the Pro Bowl, and at uh, Disney Wild World of Sports, they were having regional final action for the Madden tournament, and we're playing it on, on ESPN. And I got to sit in the crowd and watch two different guys like compete for like $50,000 in a game of Madden. It was one of the coolest things. To be a spectator and to see that in person, that's really awesome. I'm telling you, I buy that every year, and I think about... You know, in high school, we had Madden 97, and it was before it really turned 3D, and I always think my brother and I, we'd play, and my brother gets so angry, he'd smash the controller on the ground, and we didn't have a lot of money, so we couldn't just go out and buy another controller. So what's funny was, the controller D-pad was damaged after a while, where it would go haywire. So what happened is, we'd still play with it. You'd snap the ball in Madden, and the quarterback would start spinning around, and you couldn't stop him. So it would be like Russian roulette throwing the football. You didn't know if it go forward or backwards. That's one of my favorite moments, right? And essentially, we got to, in college, I remember when they came out with that Madden in 2004 with Michael Vick, that was so much fun because you made him, like, forget Bo Jackson and Tecmo Bowl, when... When Michael Vick would go back in the pocket, you could just run 90 yards for a touchdown. It was so much fun. Then the next year with Ray Lewis on the cover, 05, they're like, oh, okay, we got to add defense. Like every year I'd have that game. 06 would have the cones for the quarterback, which was a terrible idea. 07 with Sean Alexander, it would have the blocking stick where you control the blocker. See, I know the whole history of it. I know all of them. I love it. And... If you're going to have Madden next season, there there is no cover athlete. It's John Madden. He's on the cover. And when I think of the, um, the what's the word I want to use? Impression he had is on me as a youth. I love the NFL. It's my favorite sport. I, I really love basketball because I played basketball. Like I, I really, like I turn into a high school coach when I go to a game because I feel like I can see the X's and O's before they happen of any sport I watch. But I love the NFL. I mean, it's king to me in my head. 
I love it so much. And you've heard me say this, where in my lifetime, I'm 39, I'll be 40 years old. In my lifetime, when I was a kid, baseball was the number one sport in this country. And it was the national pastime. And then all of a sudden, the older I got, football overtook baseball. We're now, in my lifetime, NFL football and college football. Football is the national pastime in this country. It's kind of crazy. And John Madden was one of those reasons where he took it to the next level. And I and I think of, look, I think of Thanksgiving and football because of guys like John Madden who made it cool. He made it cool. I know he's like a Santa Claus character, but I love Thanksgiving and I love football and I love that day and I have so much fun. I always do. He taught me about football and especially with the video game. The video game taught me about formations and plays. It's really cool when I think about it. It really is. Okay, And uh, I'll end with this story. I've never told this story on the air before. And then Anthony Knockreiner is uh, he's uh, going to join us next. Knock on sports. We'll get his thoughts on the Buccaneers and Antonio Brown. So when I was in college, I was dating this woman, right? And uh, I played Madden all the time. I went to her her parents' house, and she had a younger brother. All right? I always remember this story. The younger brother had Madden. He thought he was really good. He was a 10-year-old. He was playing Madden every single day against the computer and thought he was hot stuff. And he challenged me, hey, Mark, let's play. Mark, let's play. Mark, let's play. I might be about 21 in this story, taking on a 10-year-old. And he was talking so much trash. And I said, that's it. You got to learn a lesson. We played one game and I bashed his brains in, right? His mother came up to me afterwards and said, why did you do that? Why did you beat him? He's crying now. He's so upset that you beat him at his own game, in his own house, in his own room. That's John Madden football for you. That's right. You got to learn your lesson. You're going to talk trash. You got to back it up, even in video games. Let's go to break. We'll come back. Anthony Knockreiner, knock on sports. Sucks with Buccaneers football next. <laughs> 